Good morning, folks. Quick look at the eruption from yesterday morning now that the satellites are updated. Thanks for heading to the right, big guy. Let's get started with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun were lacking significant ejecta, but that is in spite of the increase in flaring at the southern group. Finally began producing X-rays, peaking at level C8 flare yesterday. And in the big southern groups, you can see it was indeed at the trailing component to the left, where we said yesterday the potential was highest for those flashes. The solar wind is a bit more relevant at the moment. We're inside a weak coronal hole stream. It has produced a few short episodes of geomagnetic unrest, and we'll keep an eye on that today for further intensification. Let's go to the polar vortex. The south is in high gear coming off the winter cold at Antarctica and the lack of sunlight. On wind maps, it looks fantastic as it loops around the pole. Now the north is coming off summer heat and will build to that high vortex state in the coming months, but we got our very first signatures of the year here last week and maybe the last two weeks. We'll peek back in on the vortex as it grows this upcoming season. Bit more aesthetics here as clumps and rings of ejecta in a supernova were the subject of a long study to compare tiny motions that allowed them to gain a 3D perspective on the remnant and surrounding ejecta. Cocked to the side here, we can see how well the ring structure that was clearly visible in the previous picture is obscured. Folks, a great recent article is out on the Great Unconformity, a missing billion years of rock all over the world. It's one of the great geology mysteries, and here they go over the three options geologists have offered. First, a snowball earth could have scoured away the rock as glaciers moved, or perhaps the thick ice block deposition of new ground. Second, in the Rodinian breakup and its effects on the continental organization, they say the rock could have been lost that way. And third, the one they are going with here and now, that it wasn't a single event, that more than one event managed to erase this layer over time. They now think the first two ideas are bunk, and that's what I think of the third, their option. So it's not enough that something wiped away a billion years of rock, but multiple different events attacked that single layer all around the world, completing a story told millions of years earlier? Please, give me a break. The better answer is that they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Think about the ice features they are redating from half a million to millions of years old, but now tens of thousands of years old. Think of the Wolf Creek Crater in Australia that was redated from over 300,000 years old to under 200,000 years old. Think of everything we've gone over about the dating fiasco with the isotopes and how in some parts of the world they even find newer rock beneath older rock. Folks, maybe they just have no idea what the history of this planet really is. Especially when species changing is nothing like what they think. Recall the stories of rapid evolution and adaptation in Siberian deer, those lizards on Mediterranean islands. There's been a few dozen species recently that are changing too quickly for either creation or standard evolution. And here, they're seeing that birds' beaks in warming high latitudes are distending to allow for greater homeostasis. The paper leans on Allen's rule, which says those appendages should lengthen to allow easier heat release, but whatever the mechanism, it's not supposed to evolve that quickly, which is why they called it shape-shifting. Not like a sci-fi movie, but not like the science we've been taught since children either. Now last but not least, the galactic current sheet science tends to come in as breadcrumbs. And here's another one. The metallicity of the interstellar medium of the galaxy. They know from all the models that the solar environment should be well homogenized since we're inside an ancient remnant from which the sun formed but that's not what the observations are showing them. Rather than having the chemistry our sun has, nearby space has a wildly varying metallicity, and they identify infalling gas from the galaxy as the main cause. But why is it there? Why isn't it mixed? These authors suggest faint high-velocity gas clouds we can't see are waving across our solar system, but an equally valid mechanism is the arriving galactic current sheet. The current sheet material should have much higher metallicity within the sheet and much lower amounts of those higher elements in the sheath around the sheet. And by the way, when they're talking about high velocity clouds of gas that are waving across our solar system, that's not exactly a terrible description of what we think the galactic current sheet is going to do anyway. 
Now, these variations are what we should expect if the rippling electrostatic attractor at the midplane of the galaxy is right now invading the solar neighborhood. And by the way, the other way to get that metallicity is if the sun lets loose a micronova every 12,000 years and pollutes the environment with heavier elements than from which it formed. We greatly appreciate your support. Hopefully you saw what we did there, and we've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.